the mother right here. This is the Maximus 4 Extreme. This is the peak on our P67 series lineup. So we'll kind of go over some of the things that really make it special here. Uh, first, you know, like I said, fundamental wise, we're going to look at IO connectivity. First thing you're going to see is a whole lot of USB 3. There's no USB 2 on the board with the exception of the RG Connect port. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 10. So 10 USB 3. Uh, the LAN, this is dual Intel LAN on the board. So we've taken it up a notch in terms of that. Um, just like the WS uh, that okay. I sent you, that's a real nice board. I really love that board. That's also dual Intel LAN. Okay. Um, so you, you step up uh, uh, there. In terms of uh, the BRM, this is our Super 8 design. While the actual WS that you have is a 16 stage, it's really nice, especially for BRM efficiency for tight B Drew. Mm -hmm. The Super 8 has really been designed for that highest level of load. Um, right now, we've started to find some late generation D2s that we're hitting about 54 multi capable. And what we're seeing is that probably as we extend down the road, probably in about six months as the refinement process comes in, we know that clock frequency is probably going to go up a little bit. So, this is like a real future proof board for the guys that want to be able to sustain and hit those highest clock speeds. It's the over spec board. Because each one of these chokes is 40 amps in terms okay. of what we can support. So, it's just a huge amount of current that we can drive through there. Um, along with, of course, the Super ML cap that we have there. That's essentially, some people get confused by it. The reason why it's positioned right next to the CPU is it's a reservoir. So we can essentially hold about 100 times the capacitance of a normal cap. We can store up all the current there, so as soon as you ramp turbo really hard, you get up to that 5, 5, 1, 5, 2, it's going to immediately be able to access the cap and draw the power immediate to it. It's the same reason why we use it on the graphics cards. Going to kind of the I.O. back again here. Of course, we've got ROG Connect, which we introduced back on P55. Externally allows you to control the system through a notebook, um, but we upped it. We don't have the little module on here right now, but we have the Bluetooth module, so that allows you to do it with a smartphone, iPad, whatnot. Um, one of the new implementations that we've done, though, on the Extreme Series is what we call USB file splashback. So as you guys know, you guys have been doing this for a long time. When you flash the board, when you first get it, you got to at least put the CPU, you hot pause the system, put the fan, you know, memory, and graphics card, and PSU. Now, no CPU no memory, no graphics card. All you need to do is just have standby power. Awesome. You put the ROM file on here, you hold this button down, and it will low level BIOS flash the board. Excellent. So really easy. And that was just from feedback that people wanted to have the latest BIOS when they first set the system, or the ventures, they get beta BIOS builds that we're internally mm -hmm. developing, stuff like that, and they just quickly want to be able to update the BIOS. Yep. That uh, takes us to our two-stage BIOS design. Ours is a little bit different from the competitors in terms that we have true independent ROMs. So it's not just a backup ROM. So you can run one entire complete BIOS build here and then another completely entire BIOS build here. And it gets overkill because on each ROM chip you can also have eight OC profiles. Oh, so essentially geez. it's like having up to 16. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you got BIOS up the, the, up the wazoo when it goes there. Uh, more IEL here. Standard looks pretty basic. Uh, the special part here is it's the only board where we're using Marvell's second generation SATA 6G controller. So this is their more high performance by 4 interconnect. Um, the previous ones, they're not bad. They're great for single drive performance, but when you cap them into the PCIe, they cap on the bandwidth so they're not that great uh, for RAID configuration. So this is essentially just giving you more comparable performance to what the Intel PCH is providing okay. this time around. So it's just a point of distinction that we're offering there. Um, the rest of stuff I won't go too much into. You guys are, you know, familiar with voltage read points and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, still unique to us here, where we have these VGI switches. Now this works with these little LEDs. As you can see, we have the classic debug. Mm -hmm. But feedback that we had all the way back to P55 that we have on all of our P67 boards is we have this QLED. Okay. And the reason why is most users don't understand what the heck debug code is. If you guys are in the industry, you probably know. But even sometimes we've got to crack the manual and find out, well, what's, you know, FF yeah. mean or what's, yeah. you know, CF. My computer beeped 10 times. What the hell's what's going on? Mean? <laughs> so the QLED is just a, a four LED mechanism for the CPU, for the DRAM, for the VGA, and for the boot device. Okay. So if one of those devices has an initialization problem at post, it'll light and lock. Oh, awesome. So it's just more visual. It, it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Now that works in combination with these switches that what these benchers do, or somebody that just has a complex computer, Sometimes maybe, you, you know, it happens to all of us. We go to put in the card, it doesn't see properly in the system on post. Mm -hmm. If you just want to do a quick check, you can actually just turn off the PCIe lanes oh, nice. electrically without removing anything from the system. And if the system then were to initialize, you know which one's at fault. Yeah. Um, for the benchers, it's convenient because they can fully prep a four-way or a three-way system. 
and not have to break down every time. Yeah, turn them off. Exactly. Yeah. They can just turn off the ones, and then when they need to, add the, add, you know, add the LN2 or the, whatever it is for the pots. So the thing I think overall, though, that you see is that, yes, we make, you know, definitive overclocking boards. We're the standard right now on HW Bot. We're over 50% of the share. Um, when it comes to all the records that are held there. And we're really proud about that, but at the same time when we're making our boards, there's a lot of stuff that we're putting on here that doesn't have anything to do with overclocking. It's about general enthusiasts, it's about hardcore gamers, so we, we try to have that kind of that balancing act in terms of what we're bringing forth on there. So definitely a lot, you know, and then just got the like little cool stuff, you know, freaking eight PWM fan headers all spread throughout the board. You know, the uh, thermal probe headers, where you can put those and then just yeah. put the sensor probe on there. So really, really, really nice stuff there.